Good evening, everyone. My name is Alana Brown, and that is Josh Henriksen, and we are from Neighbors Group and Solo401k.com. Today is November 15th, and we're going to learn all about how to invest in alternative assets. So let us know, can you hear us? Can you see us? If you can post that here in Crowdcast where it says, some, say something nice. If you're live in Facebook, just go ahead and post that in the comment section. All right, it looks like we're live on Facebook. As we uh, as we kind of wind up, oh, perfect, yeah, Steve, good to see you, great guys. I'm gonna put a few great ways to get support. Uh, just put that in Crowdcast, gonna put it on Facebook comments as well. Perfect, there we go. You know, first way, great way is uh, through a Facebook group, Self-Directed Heroes. Uh, if you're not on there already, you're missing out. Go ahead and, and check it out. Great community, lots of good info. Alana and I are on there daily, so uh, great, great first stop. Uh, next up, support at solo401k.com. Our uh, knowledge base, again, tons of mm -hmm. articles and, and webinars, walkthroughs, guides, That'll really help with anything you need. That's searchable as well. So great, uh, great info on there. Uh, and last but not least, check out our website, solo401k.com. Tons of great info. Uh, you know, check out the blog for sure. New articles weekly. Um, just overall, great way to learn more. And uh, let's dive in. Let's do it. If you guys have any questions, if you're in Crowdcast, make sure to post them down here where it says ask a question, not in the chat box. If you're in Facebook, you can just go ahead and post that in the comment section. Hey, Debbie. Today's talk, how to invest in alternative assets. Quick, quick disclaimer, we are not a replacement for your CPA or your attorneys. We're your IRS document plan providers. Uh, we've been doing this for 18 years, so we have a, a wealth of knowledge uh, uh, to try and make the process as, as simple as possible. We know retirement plans can be confusing, um, but when it comes to uh, you know tax or legal advice, be sure to check with your CPA. Neighbors Group was started in 2006 and, and remains the industry leader in, in fully self-directed retirement plans, like our solo 401k or our self-directed checkbook IRA. Uh, here at Neighbors Group, we not only preach the power of the solo 401k, but we practice it as well. We all have our own solo 401ks. Uh, I know for Alana and myself, I'm sure others as well, we implement the tips and tricks that you see us talking about. Today we'll cover why do people invest in alternative assets, popular alternative investments, prohibited assets, prohibited transactions, accredited versus non-accredited investors, UBIT, and some of the logistics behind investing. Why invest in alternative assets? So the stock market can be volatile and unpredictable. I know all of you can see what's going on this year. Alternative assets can potentially offer higher returns, hedge against inflation, and you can have a tangible asset such as real estate within your 401k. And then true diversification. So the 60-40 stock bond portfolio model is broken. The most successful investors get true diversification by spreading their investments amongst, among sectors and asset classes. So the NASDAQ 100 has dropped nearly 33% so far in 2022. The Dow Jones average loss more than 20%. We're not saying not to invest in the stock market, but being diversified can help cut these losses and also can hedge against inflation. So here's a chart, Bitcoin versus the S&P over a five-year period. 
it's cool to see, you know, you can have lots of great gains in some of these alternative assets. So being diversified can be really powerful. I really like this chart. So if you take a look at the black line, that's going to be your single family rentals. And then the blue is bonds, the red is stocks. And it just shows how volatile bonds and stocks are, where if you own a piece of property within your solo 401k, it might provide some stability. So allowable investments. So this may look familiar to you, maybe not. This is actually going to be found in your trust agreement. So I won't read the whole thing, but the trustee may invest the trust funds or any portion thereof in obligations issued or guaranteed by the United States of America or any instrumental thereof or in other bonds, notes, debentures, mortgages, preferred stocks, common stocks, options to buy or sell stocks or other securities, mutual funds, limited partnerships, interests, commodities, real estate, or any interest therein or in such other property, real or personal, as the trustee shall determine. So there's two whole pages about investments in your trust agreement. I would suggest going through your plan and reading these two pages. But what you can really look at is what the IRS uh, dictates. And the IRS doesn't dictate what you can invest in. They actually can dictate what you cannot. So in other words, everything is on the table except for prohibited transactions and prohibited assets. More on those in just a bit. Let's go through some of the most popular investments that we see within solo 401ks. Real estate, whether it's single family rentals, apartment syndications, commercial properties, raw land, mortgage deeds and notes, private equity, private placements, tax liens, deeds, cryptocurrencies, precious metals, angel investing, uh, startup investing, venture capital, fine art funds. Uh, you will see some uh, notes on, on buying fine art. Obviously, that's prohibited. Uh, but securitized fine arts are, uh, funds are okay. Uh, farmland, mineral rights, cattle livestock certificates, crowdfunding, promissory notes, private lending, and obviously the list goes on. We do have some pretty extensive resources about alternative investments, webinars, blog postings, again, in the knowledge base, even on Facebook. Um, I'm going to post some links in chat just from, from past webinars for you guys. That'll have some, some good info as well. So while Josh is posting that, let's talk about prohibited assets and prohibited transactions. So for assets, so collectibles are prohibited. But besides that, there are very few assets that are actually off limits. There are certain gold, silver, platinum, palladium coins that are not allowed. So be familiar with that. So what are prohibited transactions? They're transactions that are not allowed within your solo 401k or self-directed IRA, and then certain assets such as the collectibles. And then here's a big one, certain transactions between a retirement plan and a just disqualified person. Some disqualified people within your plan is you personally, your spouse, any fiduciary of the retirement plan, companies who provide services to the 401k plan. And this is really important. It's your lineal ascendants and lineal descendants. And then so non-disqualified people who you can invest with, your brother and sister, your spouse's family, stepchildren, aunts, uncles, cousins, less than 10% ownership of a company you work for. Let's go through some examples. Your son needs funds to buy a new house, but interest rates are too high right now. So you think about lending him from your solo 401k. So you cannot just issue a promissory note straight from your solo 401k to your son to lend those funds. So remember, the other option is the participant loan, 
Hopefully you and Josh got to see our webinar last week. So that's an option for this scenario. Let's say you find a piece of farmland you want to purchase. You want to use solo 401k funds, but do not have enough. So you decide to form a joint venture for your personal funds, your son's funds, and your solo 401k funds to purchase that land. Nope, you can't do this. You're actually transacting with two disqualified people, you personally and your son. So that is a no-no. Let's say you own a construction firm. That firm is prohibited from working on your solo 401k owned properties. Maybe you own a rental property. It's on the beach. It's lovely. And there's an extra day that's an av available there. You cannot spend even one day on that property. Some non-disqualified person's examples, you and your friends want to invest in some farmlands. You have zero blood relationships or business relationships with these friends. That's totally okay. Your mother-in-law is a realtor and wants to list your solo 401k property. That too is okay. Let's say you own a business 5% and have no other affiliations to this business except for that 5% ownership. Yeah, your solo 401k should be able to invest in that business. But remember, when it comes to deals like this, you always want to confirm with legal counsel because this can be more complex. So the moral of the story, be familiar with your prohi prohibited transactions and disqualified people. Make a list and make sure to check it twice before investing. And of course, if you're unsure or it's a very complicated deal, seek advice from your CPA or legal counsel. Now, you may see some alternative investments that uh, require an accredited investor status. You may be asking, what does that mean? Uh, accredited investor are individuals classified by the SEC as qualified to invest in complex or sophisticated types of securities. Uh, they, they are legally authorized to purchase securities that are not registered with regulatory authorities like the SEC. Uh, these include shares and private placements, structured products, private equity, hedge funds, and, and so on. Um, they're entitled to some privileged access by satisfying some requirements, um, requirements being gross income exceeding $200,000 in each of the two most recent years or 300000 household income for those years, and a reasonable expectation, the same income for the following year. Uh, the other one, net worth exceeding $1 million, not including primary residents. Uh, again, that's individually or jointly. And also, if you hold certain licenses and have Series 7, 65, or 82. W one of the reasons certain offerings are, are limited to accredited investors is, is to ensure that all participating investors are financially sophisticated and, and able to fend for themselves or sustain times of, of volatility. Um, they, they understand and can handle the risk uh, and large losses. Remember, they, these investments are not regulated by the SEC, so they can be more risky. And, and again, you know, accredited investor status was created to protect investors. Um, it's a, it's a credit investor is a person or entity that uh, is allowed to invest in securities that are not registered with the SEC um, and, and so on. Various uh, alternative investments require it. You'll see kind of throughout your journey, if you haven't already, um, some, of the, some of the pros of, of accredited investor status include access to unique and, and restricted investments, possible high returns, and, and more diversification. Some of the cons include that you know high risk, uh, high return, uh, high minimum investment amounts, high fees, and illiquidity of, of investments. Okay, let's talk a little bit about UBIT, unrelated business income tax. So what's gonna trigger UBIT? So you'll wanna ask yourself two questions. Is the income generated from a trade or business activity? Is the activity engaged upon on a regular or repeated basis? So the IRS doesn't want retirement accounts to have an unfair advantage over normal investors. 
So what is UBIT? So it's when a tax exempt entity owns an operating business and you're going to be taxed at a really high tax rate, which is the trust rate. Okay, so what will trigger UBIT? Let's do some examples. So Leroy invests in his cousin's sandwich shop, which is an LLC. Every time the sandwich shop distributes profit to the 401k, Leroy has to pay UBIT, even though those funds are tax deferred because he's investing in an operating business. If it was structured different, maybe like a C-Corp and he was getting shares, that's a different story, but this is an LLC. Timmy has 10 fix and flips homes within his solo 401k. The IRS views Timmy as running a home flipping business within the solo 401k. If Timmy did one to three rehabs and resells, then this could be okay. But doing an excess number of fix and flips is more of a business than a passive investment. Bill, he's used his solo 401k funds to purchase Bitcoin mining equipment and plans to mine within his solo 401k. That is an active business. Leslie has used her solo 401k funds to purchase a short-term rental. Leslie allows her guests to stay as short as one night. She also does turn down services and provides wine and cheese at 5 p.m. every day. That's really nice of Leslie, but now it's almost like she's running a hotel, which qualifies as an active business. How to avoid this? No turn down, no concierge services, and there should be a minimum nights required to book. Then we have Jeremy. He's used his solo 401k funds to purchase damaged industrial and heavy equipment. He plans to fix them and resell them within his solo 401k. Jeremy is acting as a dealer. He's buying and then reselling an asset. So that is a no-no. So maybe you've found an investment that will trigger you, but you've got three choices. Number one, pick a different investment strategy that does not generate UBIT. Number two, engage in that activity, pay your UBIT. Or number three, implement a UBIT blocker strategy to dramatically reduce the taxable impact. But if you're gonna do this, you really have to engage a CPA or an attorney. They are gonna become a big part of your self-directed IRA or your solo 401k team because they're gonna to need to file some kind of return on the behalf of your retirement account. This is very complex. Um, keeping your investments passive is way less of a headache. But if you're inclined to do such, then uh, you may want to think about having a UBIT blocker. So what exactly is it? It's a taxable corporation inserted between a tax exempt entity and a UBIT exposed transaction. So the owner will create a C-Corp to first invest his or her retirement funds. Then the C-Corp makes the investment into the operating business. Remember, this strategy does not eliminate the tax exposure, but rather reduces the taxable rate. So the, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 changed the top corporate rate from 35% to a flat rate of 21%. So that's better than the trust tax. So as you can see here, here's a C-Corp block. Golden Goose has invested the funds into their C-Corp called Golden Ticket Corp, and then that corp buys the Airbnb. So it does seem simple, but remember, you're absolutely gonna need your CPA involved because there is tax returns here. Since we're talking about U UBIT, we're gonna talk about UDFI, which is a type of UBIT. What is UDFI? It's unrelated debt finance income. So really important here, this only applies to an IRA LLC, your self-directed IRA. This does not apply to the solo 401k. So this is when a tax is applied to a portion of the income in proportion to the amount borrowed. So it only has to do with if you're gaining leverage for a deal. So some kind of financing or mortgage. You'll see this in um, a non-recourse loan if you're doing it on your own, or maybe you're getting into a syndication. Syndications typically, 99.9% .9 of the time, they take some kind of leverage. So you might have this UDFI, but it's not a huge deal. It shouldn't deter you from a real uh, from a deal if you do have an IRA LLC, but you will wanna work with your CPA on this one. 
All right, we're gonna do a little pop quiz here. It's called UBIT or no UBIT. So if you're here in Crowdcast, post in the chat box, so where it says something, say something nice. If you're in Facebook, you'll just go ahead and post it in the comment section. For the first one, long-term rental property. Does this trigger UBIT or is there no UBIT? I don't have the Jeopardy music playing this time, Josh. <laughs> I was just going to bring it up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I think I kind of cheated too. Oops. Marcella, you're on to something. Jang, great. Christine, it's looking like you guys are right. We'll see if more come in. Robert, awesome. There's a little bit of a delay, so we're giving you guys a few extra seconds. And everyone that said no, you bet, you are correct. All right, next up. Rehabbing and reselling one property a year in your retirement account. UBIT or no UBIT? I feel like we should make a spin off the Jeopardy song, but instead of doo 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 doo, it's UBIT UBIT. Oh, Josh. Huh? I love it. I love it. I love it. Thanks. <sighs> All right. All right, guys, is this UBIT or no UBIT? Rehabbing, reselling, one property. Marcella's saying UBIT. We got Jang saying no UBIT with a smiley face. No UBIT from Robert. Josh, you want to give them the great answer? Answer? Drum roll, please. No UBIT. Ding, ding, ding. One, one property a year is fine. Okay, what about flipping four properties in one year in your retirement account? UBIT or no UBIT? Marcella with the UBIT <laughs> and the excitement. Robert UBIT. You guys are obviously paying attention to the presentation. Everyone is getting gold stars. Christine, very good. So gold stars for everyone. Yes, it does trigger you a bit. Jerry, I see you. Great job. Jerry's on Facebook. So Hi, he's, he's the, 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 the sole commenter. Oh. We appreciate you. All right, next up, ownership in your friend's shoe store, which is an LLC. You bet, you bet, no, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> See? I no, think, we, could, a, I think yeah. we can run with it. I think it's great. Let's get this copyrighted immediately. And uh, also, Ron, if you're paying attention, this is going to answer your question that you commented earlier. Uh Somewhat. So, uh, the, yes, there is UBIT on that. Uh, it, it's an active business that the Solo 401k owns a part of. So it will be subject to UBIT. All right. Good job, guys. Gold stars everywhere. All right. So what about an Airbnb? UBIT or no UBIT? You bit, you bit, you bit. Yeah, this is why we didn't have singing careers. We are so 401k specialists. <laughs> yep. Marcella, if it filters via a C Corp, no you bit. I like it. I like it. Depends. Jang, love it. You bit, Christine. Everyone's doing great. Once again, you're getting some gold stars. So it is a little bit of a gray area. So first, don't provide what are easily considered personal services. Don't turn down the covers. Don't leave a mint. 
on the pillow. Don't offer room service or wine at night. So this doesn't mean you can't provide basic rental services. This could be, you know, delivering the key and providing the maid services between guest stays, you know, organizing that. However, providing daily maid services is probably hotel style. So this is a bit of a gray area. So good job, guys. <laughs> All right, next up. Uh, Andre, <laughs> uh, next up, investing in Bitcoin. Ubit or no Ubit? Marcella, I will come drink the wine with you. Yeah, thanks for the invite, ladies. <laughs> You're of course you're invited, Josh. Bring the chocolates. <laughs> Deal. All right, give you guys a minute. Let me jump on. Investing in Bitcoin, Ubit or no Ubit? All right, Marcella, great. All right, answer, guys. No Ubit. It's that. passive investment. So again, no Ubit. What about mining Bitcoin? Ubit or no Ubit? So mining Bitcoin is going to trigger Ubit. Good job. Nike, great. Perfect. All right. Next up, investing in an S corp. Ubit or no Ubit? Robert quickly said Ubit. All right, guys. So kind of a, a trick question on that one. Uh, it's actually not allowed. A trust or an IRA cannot be a shareholder of an S corp. So that is a um, somewhat of a prohibited transaction. Yeah, tricky one. All right. You guys did awesome. So now let's get to the nitty gritty of it. Let's talk about how to actually invest in these alternative investments. Let's take an overview of the investment flow. Okay, so like you guys know, first step is you want to fund your retirement account. Remember, there's only two ways, rollovers and new contributions. So once you fund that trust checking account, you're simply wiring the funds from that trust checking account to your investment, whatever it is. It was really as simple as that. Let's take a look at a single family rental example. So we have Nedra. She is doing her first investment in a real estate deal. The name of her trust is Opportunity Trust. So she's already funded it with her new contributions and rollovers. So step one is complete. The next step is she is going to wire the funds from her trust checking account to the closing table of the real estate deal. What's really important is the name on that title is always going to be the trust name. Nedra is the trustee. So she gets to sign for everything, but her trust name is what is taking title. So now she owns this property. Let's say she's getting rental checks in. That is going back into her trust checking account. Maybe she has expenses for that property. That's coming out of the trust checking account. So you always wanna make sure that there's no personal funds being mixed in this deal. You're not taking any of that rental income to you personally. You're not paying for any of the expenses personally. Everything is flowing in and out of your trust checking account. And remember, there's all kinds of different real estate you can do. You can do the single family homes, vacation homes, multifamily, apartment buildings, commercial properties, mobile homes, raw lands. So this example applies to all of that. Let's talk about syndications. Todd. His trust name is Boomer Trust, and he has funded his trust checking account. He is going to invest in Stella syndication. So all he has to do is follow Stella's wiring instructions 
And just like any bank account you guys have now, you know, um, Todd's just going to wire the funds from his trust checking account to Stella syndication. What's really important is on all of the documents, you know, for a syndication, you're going to be involved in something called subscription documents. On these documents, it's always going to be the trust name as the investor. And then Todd is the trustee. So he has that signatory authority and he is signing for everything. So he's wired the funds to Stella. And now his solo 401k is a part of this deal. Todd's getting monthly dividends from that syndication. It's going back into his trust checking account, not going to him personally. Investing in private notes. So Jack's solo 401k, Quid Trust, is investing in a private note. Jack's lending his friends $50,000. Quid Trust is the lender. Jared is the borrower. Jack gets to set the terms of the note and decides to set the interest at 10%. Jared has to make monthly payments. Jack works with his attorney to draw up the paperwork for the note to include principal amount, interest rate, payment schedule, and final payment date. In the promissory note, it lists Jack's trust, quid trust as the lender, not Jack. So remember, you're always using the solo 401k trust name and trust tax ID number. You will sign the solo 401k promissory note as the trustee never mixing personal and retirement funds when investment, investing and payments from the note should go straight back into your solo 401k bank or brokerage. Bitcoin. Okay, Michael, he's ready to invest in Bitcoin. He has funded his trust checking account and he's come to Neighbors Group to open up his Gemini account because we can get his account open up in three to four days. When if you do it on your own, it could take a week or maybe a month. So as soon as Michael's crypto account is opened, he's ready to fund it. So since we have set it up for him, it's done correctly. It's in his trust name. And all Michael has to do is wire the funds from his trust checking account to his Gemini account, and he's ready to purchase his crypto. So really, really easy, especially if you're having us set this up for you. If anyone is interested, you can check out our partnership with Gemini. I will post it. And Josh, if you would post it in Facebook for me, appreciate that. Will do. Thank you. Let's talk about crowdfunding because it has become wildly proper, popular. It allows you to invest in the private market markets. <clears throat> So many of these investments are available via online app, such as Fundrise, Yield Street, Farm Together, AngelList. I actually did one of these this morning and it was so easy. So just like what we've been saying, you're funding your trust checking account. When you're opening up um, any of these accounts at your chosen platform, it's always gonna be in your trust name. You know, maybe you're looking at a platform that doesn't allow that, so then you cannot do it. You know, if they do not allow for your trust name to be on this account using your trust EIN, you cannot use that platform. As long as they do, then you are all good. So you're going to open up that new platform and you're just wiring your funds from your trust checking account to the platform and you're done. You have invested in crowdfunding with your solo 401k. A lot of our clients have us form a special purpose LLC for their solo 401k. Um, it's especially advantageous for like real estate or cryptocurrency, mainly just ease of investing. Uh, it, it's an asset or sub account of your solo 401k plan. The member of the LLC is, uh, the, uh, is the solo 401k trust uh, and the LLC manager is you. So you're, you're operating the LLC. It's, it's not a business. It's the, you know, the sole purpose of the LLC is to invest 401k funds. There's no separate tax return. And the, the special purpose LLC is, is a disregarded entity. Asset protections, one of the main reasons for the, the special purpose LLC, uh, it, it's recognized as a separate legal entity particularly favored again by, by real estate owners. Um, we, we set up our special purpose LLC in Wyoming. Uh, we, we so it's formed in Wyoming. 
uh, which they don't require a listing uh, of a member or manager in the articles of an of, uh, organization. Um, so some added privacy. Your registered agent will receive any legal notifications, but most states don't require that the beneficiary or the owner of the LLC even be identified. Um, your, your identifying information is, is in the operating agreement, uh, but that's a private document not filed with the state. So again, ma main reason would be ease of investing, some investment opportunities like Alana mentioned, uh, kind of get confused by the word trust or the 401k structure. Uh, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, title companies are much more familiar with the LLC structure than uh, like, a tr again, a trust or 401k coming in and purchasing a property. Uh, using the LLC also causes some less headache and, and less educating on your part. Sometimes you're kind of telling people what you have, right? I'm convincing them I have a, a trust that's purchasing this and trying to get through it. So may, may, maybe that a little bit easier. It also makes it much easier for the small crypto exchanges. Um, most of them don't allow trust accounts, you know, that, that style. They're just kind of confused. So it makes it easier with the LLC. Now, what's, what's really important, we're kind of looking at a graph of the, the fund flow for the special purpose LLC. It's really important is that the rollovers and, and contributions go into the trust checking account um, and, and then funds go into the special purpose LLC bank account and invested directly through the LLC, which Alana can kind of point out on her screen. But, um, you know, loans and distributions will go directly into your personal account, not they don't go through the LLC, they go through your trust straight out. Um, so which kind of that, that graph breakdown. And uh, okay, back to, back to Nidra. So she's uh, neighbors. She she has neighbors group set up a special purpose LLC for her solo four hundred one k trust. Uh, she named her LLC Savvy LLC. Nidra's ready to make her first real estate investment with her special purpose LLC. After the LLC was formed, Nidra opened another bank account, but it, this time was in the name of that special purpose LLC. Nidra moves funds from her trust checking account into her LLC bank account. And Nidra wires the funds from her LLC bank account to the closing table of the real estate deal. That time she takes title in the name of her LLC, Savvy LLC. All expenses and returns need to flow in and out of the LLC bank account. Uh, if you're going to use your LLC for an investment, the flow needs to be correct, obviously. Always, new contributions and rollovers go into the trust checking account. From there, you're free to move them to the LLC bank account. When using the LLC bank account, all investments, again, are titled in the name of the LLC. Nidra also has a brokerage account. She enjoys doing some private lending within her solo 401k. Uh, she needs to put those assets in her trust name in order to provide that extra layer of, of protection. Since the brokerage account and private notes don't hold liability. She keeps it separate from that rental property. So let's say Nidra has a rental renter in, in that property and they hurt themselves, want to seek legal action. Since the property is in the LLC and all of her assets titled in her trust name will then be protected from that, that lawsuit. Obviously work with your attorney if that happens, hopefully not. We are doing a little special. I'm going to put in a, a link on the Special Purpose LLC. If you're in Crowdcast, directly below us right now, right in the middle, I think I'm over here, uh, you'll see Claim Your Special Purpose LLC today. That'll take you right here. Facebook, I'm going to, I'm going to post that link in chat. If you're looking to add another layer of uh, security for you guys. Okay, let's take a vote. So same place where you were posting your UBIT responses. What's going to be your next investment? So today I know I invested in crowdfunding. That was my current investment. I know I'm looking to do maybe real estate in the near future. Josh, what what's going on in your 401k? Dogecoin. Woo. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, honestly, I've been I've been uh, going on Yield Street far too much. I don't know if anybody on here has checked out Yield Street, but they're great. And uh, there's been some really cool kind of small business stuff. So awesome. Yeah. I'm I looking think for I'm private check it out. Yeah. Yes.
So let us know what you're thinking of investing in. Maybe everybody use the link to go set up a special purpose <laughs> LLC. Maybe you're just not sure. Well, oh, Marcella crypto. for crypto. Not mutual funds, <laughs> it's Iran. <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> Bitcoin for Tracy, Marcella crowdfunding. Yeah, maybe I hope this gave you guys some ideas. I know I get really excited when I start investing in things besides the stock market. I feel super empowered. Tracy's waiting for Bitcoin Tracy to agree. 13,000. <laughs> I think everybody's kind of on the same board that yeah. crypto, crypto, small business, start roots up. I like it. Awesome. Marcella's investing in Ron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marcella. Honestly, with, with his comedy career going as it is, it's probably not a bad investment. I like it. <laughs> uh, Christine, that's correct. As long as it doesn't leave the platform, right? It's As long as it doesn't leave the solo 401k umbrella, that won't be a taxable event. While we're here quick quick answer if you guys do have other questions make sure you put them in the ask a question point yeah christine you're right correct that's yeah. passive okay if you do not have a solo 401k and you are jealous about everything that we're talking about right now sign up you can get your solo 401k in minutes for all of our clients out there you should be a part of our referral program we pay you and share this with all of your friends so if you're not a part of it go ahead and check it out I do have the link and I will post it. And Josh, if you will post it in Facebook, sorry, my f computer is being slow. I'm not trying to order you around, but do it. <laughs> you can post that into Facebook. There is our referral program link. Definitely join us on that. And of course, like Josh, Josh mentions in the beginning of the presentation, use our supports guys. We have created this for you. They're really great. If you haven't chatted on our online chat, it's really great. You're going to talk to one of us. There's a real person back there. Talk to us. We want to chat. Okay. Let's do some questions. We have a about 15 minutes. Okay. So the first question comes from Bob. For someone who has a self-directed solo 401k, must the annual fee be paid using 401k funds or can the account owner pay the fee with personal funds? Great question, Bob. So, you know, most people will use their business credit or debit card because it's actually a deduction for your small business. Most CPAs will not recommend using your 401k funds to pay for your fee for your plan it's really hard to get funds into your 401k. So don't waste your money on that. So the answer is you probably want to use your business or personal funds to pay for your solo 401k fees. All right, next up, Robert, self-custody Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. With all the exchange failures, this is even more important. Is this a prohibited transaction with solo 401k funds? Great question, uh, Robert. No, it's not. You can you can self custody in a hardware wallet. Be very careful. There's definitely rules on it. Uh, well, guidelines that you want to be very careful of. Um, we have a great article on that. I can uh, give me a second. I'll, I'll post that in our uh, in chat. But again, uh, no, it's not prohibited. Uh, probably recommended. Yeah, absolutely. Scary stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Josh is grabbing that article for Robert and for everyone else. Let's move on to Funny Man Ron. All right, is the only place to store precious metals for the 401k in a safety deposit back box at a bank? So that's not the only place. That is a place that you can do it. It's important that if you are going to do it at with a safety deposit box, that box is in the name of your trust and not your personal name. You guys know that's the theme of all of this. Everything is titled in your trust name 
or if you have that special purpose LLC in the LLC name. Um, also, you can do, you know, precious metals in a custodial program. Um, there are many companies out there that'll store it for you. So you're just going to set up an account with a company. And just remember, like we keep honing in on, everything is in your trust name. So you do not have to use a safety deposit box. Great question, Ron. All right, Ron has another, if I want to invest in a small privately held business, which I won't control, are there any restrictions? I think we've kind of answered a few of those, but yes, there are restrictions, no S corps, um, UBIT may be involved depending on the business. Um, so definitely want to look into it, work with your CPA, work with your attorney. Don't be afraid to invest in a small privately held business that you're not going to control because of those restrictions. But yes, there are some, so just, uh, definitely something to be aware of. Next question from, comes from Marcella. Have you seen any solo 401k holders at Neighbors wanting to invest in a mortgage note for another solo 401k holder? Is this possible? Also, are there resources to invest in businesses among the community with each other? And lastly, what are your thoughts about investing in a pool of investors in a storage unit? Thanks. All right, Marcella. So um, as for investing in notes with another solo 401k holder, you can do that as long as they're not one of your disqualified people. That is not a problem. Also, resources to invest in small businesses. Um, we don't have a ton of resources because we don't really make recommendations. But um, like we talked about, you know, you might want to do some research, Yield Street, Farm Together. There are really a lot of companies out there. Um, I know I sign up for a bunch of financial newsletters, and that's how I get some insight as well. So, you know, do some research, jump in our Facebook group, let us know what you found. Maybe it'll also inspire other people to share what they found. And then lastly, what are your thoughts about investing in a pool of investors in storage units? Yeah, that's great. I know a lot of our clients that are doing this, you know, storage units, they do really well. You know, they're great during a recession. They're good when things are booming. People like to keep their stuff. So they do make a lot of money. So we don't give investment advice, but I like what you're saying here, Marcella. All right, next up, Keith. Can disqualified transactions result in hefty penalties? Potentially, yes, right? It depends on what the uh, disqualified transaction is, how big the dollar amount is, and, and really what you're doing. Um, but short answer, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I think in one of our presentations that we focus just on prohibited transactions, we go over some of those penalties. So check it out. Um, it should be in Facebook or on YouTube. If we can, we will pull it for you. Marcella, do you need different Gemini accounts for different cryptos? For example, Bitcoin and Monero, or can you invest in both under one account? Great question. So you can do it all under one account. When you need multiple accounts arises when you're going to use, maybe you want to use traditional funds and Roth funds. Then you want two accounts. Maybe your spouse is on your plan. You might have four accounts total, one for you and your, your traditional funds, one for your spouse's traditional funds, one for your Roth, one for your spouse's uh, Roth funds. So you can have multiple, but you do not need multiple if you're doing the same tax classification you just want to purchase all different kinds of crypto. That's okay, Marcella. All right, next up from John. Can you sell improved real estate back to yourself? Uh, John, no. That would be a, a prohibited transaction. You're a disqualified person. So if you go through that article on, on disqualified persons or kind of look into it, um, you're basically self-dealing. So the IRS... Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't like that. Marcella. Oh, so we can use a safety deposit box under the trust um, name. Yes, as long as it's in the trust name, you can use a safety deposit box. Because remember, guys, we are not keeping the gold and silver in our homes. That is a big no-no.
Um, Ilana, that question from Jerry, I'm going to double check on that. Do cattle contracts have you pit? Um, if you want to set that aside, I let him know. I, I dragged it over, but I'm going to get back to you, Jerry, on the cattle contract question. That's a weird one. So let me yeah, check. Yeah, I think it. it really depends on how the contract is laid out. Um, I think so too. Yeah. So if it's more passive, it's okay. But, you know, if there's certain, I think if the contract has something to do with profit, so that, you know, you want your your lawyer to um, look at that contract to make sure it's not triggering you a bit. And as long as it's not, then you should be okay. So Jerry, that's something that you definitely want to talk to an attorney about when it comes to something that may trigger you a bit. Good info. Awesome. Okay. Eric on Facebook, questions on investing via solo 401k. So 1 million is for accredited investors, but trust is 5 million. Why? Why? Not really that sure. Honestly, wish I knew the answer to that one. Um, that's more of an SEC question. Because <laughs> the because the room that all these guys got in to make these rules was too big, and they couldn't <laughs> get together. They couldn't figure they couldn't. it out. Uh, <laughs> why we have certain rules, you know? Why the IRS does certain things, you know? We may never know. All right. Next up, Eric on Facebook. How strict is the documentation for private notes? Would a basic contract be done, or does it require a lawyer? Uh, technically, it doesn't require a lawyer. I personally wouldn't get into a contract like that without my lawyer. Um, you know, but it depends, right? No, it doesn't. There's no st strict like laws or rules written uh, requiring a, a lawyer be involved. Yeah, and I wonder, like, maybe if you look at something like Legal Zoom, that might be more cost efficient. Um, you know, just having it stamped yeah. <laughs> just protects totally. yourself, Eric. Yeah. Then another question from Eric: Are NFT real estates allowed? So actually, NFTs are not allowed in your solo four hundred one k. So that is a yeah. no no. I know we didn't bring that one up. So glad that you did, Eric. Eric, just so you know, it's considered a collectible. It's not physical real estate. It's considered a collectible. So that's why it's not allowed. Like buying art. Perfect. Thank you for that clarification, Josh. Guys, really good questions. We'll give you another second or so. Um, and just a reminder, um, you guys have great questions. Now join us for our weekly Q and A's um, in Facebook every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern, um, also in Crowdcast. Uh, we love when there's a lot of people there because we really do like answering your questions. We want to help you out and it makes it fun for us. Um, Eric, based off what you just sent, you may want to look into that more, that Eveland. Uh, if they're selling, it, that it looks more like a syndication where they're like, um, you know, group buying. Uh, you, you'll have to look more into it as long as it isn't a collectible right as long as it's physical um you should be fine uh your other question do we need a separate hardware wallet for holding crypto in my solo 401k account versus personal accounts uh yes right you don't need a whole f new wallet you will want at least different sub accounts but the funds have to stay separate you need to know which is which and and in different accounts all right ron has another question Ooh. I just lost it. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me find Ron's question. Okay. Can I own timber lands in a special purpose LLC? The timber harvests about once a decade. So I would say that's okay. Um, because remember, you bitch triggered when there's, you know, lots of active business. If the timber harvest is once a decade, that's not incredibly active. But of course, I can't say yes or no. That's something that your CPA or attorney will have to let you know. While we're waiting for some other questions, Josh, what is the next webinar that we're doing? I think in December we have something planned. Yeah, we're going to do a kind of a practical walkthrough of the Roth conversion, um, you know, for the, the mega backdoor Roth strategy. So not so much uh, here's what we can do. This is what you should do if you're doing this. Um, again, technical walkthrough of the, the Roth strategy. Yeah. 
So in plan conversion, so you guys know that in plan conversions are due December 31st, because if you want to either pay the taxes or get that conversion done in the year for 2022, you got to get it done. Or if you miss that deadline, it'll be for your 2023 tax return. So we'll educate you guys right before the deadline. Okay, should we call it? Oh, always when we say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so great question from Eric. What, uh, what to do with real estate when distributions are required? So, you know, when you're getting towards, you know, when your RMDs are due, your required minimum distributions, you know, right now that's at 72 and a half. You want to start planning for that. Does that A mean start, you know, liquidating? some of your assets, you know, having that cash available, you actually can do partial distributions from real estate, a bit complicated. And like what we always say, <laughs> work with your CPA, but it is possible. So yes, you want to start preparing. If you're getting towards that age, you want to start preparing for your distributions. Excellent question. We've had really great questions today, guys. Bill, I am familiar with Kinesis Money. Uh, yes, that's totally allowed. You can absolutely, I believe they have institutional accounts. Double check that, but you shouldn't have a problem opening an account in the name of the solo 401k trust. Um, yeah, no problem. Perfect. Oh, Marcella, thank you. You're very, very sweet. And thanks for all your participation today. You get all of the gold stars. Every time. <laughs> if we had more, we'd give out more. <laughs> Okay, I don't see anything else coming in on Facebook. Okay, and we're just about at the the end time. So thank you guys so much. We will see you Monday for the Q&A. Josh will be hosting that. And then for our webinar in December. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs>